let's talk about tonight's game, shall we, Herbie? Like, just looking from outside in, six points doesn't feel like enough, but I guess the commanders have their own set of issues going on every single game that kind of pop up out of nowhere. Uh, the Chicago Bears, on fire in your research? Behind, have you got to talk to numerous people, I assume, for this game? And what's the messaging about what's happening? Because it's loud right now around Chicago, it's, Herbie. What are you hearing? It's, it, it's hard. I mean, it, it's, it, it is what it is. 14 straight, off to a rough start this year. Um you know, I, I think it's taken a toll on Justin. You know, I think he's trying to stay positive. If you can read his body language during games. You know, they, they played their hearts out last week, came up short, you know, had a big lead, looked like, wow, this is going to be their big win, maybe get them going. And and then, you know, Denver comes back and ends up winning that game. And, and I think it just the way they lost the game, I think, also really hurts them. So here they short week. You know, that's one thing about me, guys, you know, these – I always have these short week games, and Chuck can tell you, coaches and players, I'm just like, I, I, my, every time I talk to one of these coaches, I'm like, you know, I apologize. I know it's a short week. You know, I mean, they just lost a heartbreaker, and it's already Monday, and they're already behind getting ready for this game. So um, in this case, maybe it comes at a good time because they need to get back out there and try to win a football game. But I, I'm – I'm more optimistic on Washington than, than maybe others. You know, I, I, I think the defensive front obviously is going to keep them in a lot of games. Uh, they're still trying to figure things out at linebacker. The back end has some athletes. You know, Emmanuel Forbes had a rough game last week. Who doesn't against A.J. Brown? But I, I don't know how much you guys are watching Sam Howe and, and what uh, Eric Bieniemy's is doing, but they're, they're, they're showing signs of, of having – I think an offense that can really make some plays. And this kid pl plays with poise, man. And he's got a lot of playmakers around him. So I'm I'm excited to see what they can do tonight. And you look at their schedule these next three or four games. They get a win tonight. They could get on a little bit of a roll, and then they get Philly back here at home here at D.C. So Washington's a good-looking football team. Ron Rivera, as you guys know, obviously knows how to rebuild a a, a, an entire roster, and they're heading in a good direction. I'll throw this at you, Pat. I'm going to see if you guys agree hey, with Coach it. Rivera has said some stuff publicly that's certainly inside voices, but I'm happy to hear that he's got the sound. You know what I mean? He said some outside yeah. voice stuff oh, yeah. that yeah. should be in yeah. here. You know what I mean? But yeah. uh, they are yeah. rolling. And Sam Howell's got a hose. But what were your stats? Oh, he does. And, and 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 he's got incredible poise. Let me let me throw this at you. As, as we watch these first-round quarterbacks um, – Every, it's a guessing game, right? It's and, and Chuck's been in those rooms. I mean, it's like throwing a dart. You're hoping you get the right guy. You're hoping it's an Andrew Luck type of guy. But a lot of times it's not. I mean, you look at the, the numbers, the first round picks over the last, I don't know, 10 years, there's way more misses than hits. Way. So all of a sudden you watch, all of a sudden you watch Brock Purdy, right? And you're like, here's Mr. Irrelevant, and he's working in Kyle Shanahan's scheme. And here's the one thing that he and Sam Howell have in common. A ton of reps in college. You know, Brock Purdy started four years at Iowa State, and all those reps go, comes in with zero pressure, ends up winning it. He's a great fit in what Kyle's doing. Now you look at Sam Howe, started three years, started his freshman year at North Carolina and was a three-year starter, played a lot of football games, had a lot of great moments, had a lot of tough moments. My point is he was, he was calloused. He went through a lot. Comes into to D.C., no one expects much of him. Carson Wentz there, no pressure. Ends up eventually getting the starting uh, game against Dallas, last game of the year. Showed enough that Ron Rivera said in January, that's my guy moving forward. I think a lot of the media was like, what? That's your guy? Fifth rounder? You're going with him? Ends up earning it by the second preseason game against the Ravens. They announced, okay, he's won. He held off Jacoby Brissett. And my point is, is this the future? Is this the future looking for that guy in the fourth round, the fifth round? that has played a ton of college football, but you're not rolling the dice and setting the franchise back if it implodes on you and you miss on that first pick, second pick, third pick. I don't know. I, I'm wondering if the NFL, Copycat League, if, if more teams won't go that route. You look at Sam Howe and Brock Purdy at the Combine there in Indy, you're not going to be like, holy cow, we got to have these guys. <laughs> they're, just, they're just gritty, smart uh, process quickly, and they're distributors. They get the ball to the playmakers, and they do it in a quick fashion. I just want, I'm just wondering, asking Coach and you guys, if, if that might become more of a trend than uh, these two guys maybe getting that thing started.
So I think Tom Brady picked 199, right? I mean, yeah. so like yeah. there's always going to be the hope that that guy is there. Russell Wilson, I think, was in there. Dak Prescott, I think, was also. And you can kind of do that. Kirk Cousins was drafted after RG3. Was it third round? Third round as well. Third round, he was drafted in there. So what I think you're leading to, though, copycat league, I don't know if guys are going to be searching for like fourth, fifth rounders to be their guys, but I think number of reps in college is going to start becoming a little bit more of an important factor in like deciding who's your guy. We can go to this. We can pivot right off this game and go – C.J. Stroud's joining us in about an hour and a half or so here on this particular program. He played a lot of Ohio State, right? A lot of massive games, a lot of plays, a lot of situations, especially with those Ohio State fans on what they say, how they operate, the expectations, the big lights, the prime time. And it's like he stepped into this NFL now. He's unconscious, dude. He he, listen His stats right now, uh, and obviously he's a first-rounder, but played a lot of football, to your point. He's on pace for 5,151 yards and 26 touchdowns. Joins Mahomes, Rodgers, Breeze, and Manning, and Brady with 300 pass yards per game and zero interceptions in their first four games. Pretty good. Yeah. That's a pretty good comparison. So it's like – and, and, and you know what? Your, your point about what he went through at Ohio State, they lost to Oregon one of his first uh, starts. And Ohio State, just like Kyle McCord, they're, they're, their fans were ready to throw him in the trash. And he took that really <laughs> hard. But to experience that, right? I mean, he was he was depressed. He was like, quite, you know, he wanted to get off Twitter, wanted you know, not deal with it. But he fought through that storm. And I just think to your point about when guys go through not so much the wins, the national championships, that's the easy part. But it's the guys that go through the crap, the guys that have to go through some grind and have to deal with it and cope with it and learn to cope with it. You get to the NFL, that's, that's your world weekly. You know, one week you're a hero, the next week you're a GOAT. And to me, I, I think you're you're right. And that's my, really my point about these these guys. I'm not saying you're looking for a fourth or fifth rounder. I'm just saying maybe you're willing to take that guy in the fourth, fifth, or sixth round that, that has played a lot of football, that maybe doesn't have the fanfare. Your fans aren't going to get real excited that you picked him. But maybe there's, there's a place on, on the roster to take a chance on some of those guys. Experience is something you can't gain at a combine, obviously. Jim. No, absolutely not. But to your point, Herbie, right there, if you pass on – you know, right. these guys that we build up, you know, in, in the media. Right. And we don't take them. And then the guy, the team right behind you takes them. And then they end up, you know, winning a Being Super Bowl. You're fired. And then yeah. they, they yeah. end up, you're, you're, you're freaking gone. You know, so maybe yeah. the formula is, you know, you're going to take that guy. You're still going to go after that guy. But maybe we, maybe we do like Sam Fran did. Maybe we take a Brock Purdy. You know, if we have an extra pick, all these uh, compensatory picks that, that you get, maybe you go find that guy. It's interesting to think about how all the politics of it all kind of weighs in. Because if you take a guy ahead of a guy, for instance, he goes, great, yeah, you're an idiot, you're fired. But if that person's terrible, right, and you take that, you're the genius. But there's a lot more fourth and fifth round quarterbacks that have missed. You talk about first rounders that have missed. There's fourth and fifth round quarterbacks that have been gone through the NFL so quickly as well. It's just finding the guy is difficult. You think Sam Howe, though, it sounds like you think Sam Howe. And if you remember last year, the re- reason why I got to start there at the last game of the year is because Taylor Heineke said, this is what ta- – he said, you know what? Hey, I've started enough games, mm-hmm. okay? You guys have seen what I do. I get my new pair of Jordans. You need to give this Sam Howe guy an opportunity. And then they were like, all right, you don't want to start? Yeah, you're going to be gone from our team, but we'll put Sam Howe in there. And Taylor Heineke, who obviously another guy that we're referring to had success as a quarterback after playing a lot of football in college, he when we asked him about that at Super Bowl, he was like – watching Sam Howe every day of practice in the locker room, how he operates. He said, I felt bad that this guy was not getting an opportunity. So, like, he just handed his opportunity off to him. And now got Ron Rivera saying, shit, if I knew he was that good, we would have played him a long time. Yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, that's <laughs> once again, inside voice. Mm-hmm. Inside voice, not to be, need to be outside voice. But does Sam have it to go on a run, you think? And do the boys believe in Sam Howe? It feels like they do. That's a great – Great question, and I think we just got our answer in the last two weeks. Two weeks ago, they played Buffalo. Couldn't have gone any worse. Sacked nine times, threw four interceptions. Think about that. You're a fifth-round pick last year. You're trying to prove yourself to your boys. And the Buffalo game, it was a disaster all the way around, but everyone always looks at the quarterback. Nine sacks, four interceptions. Now you got Philly, right? I mean, of all teams you got to play against that defensive line coming off a nine-sack game, what does he do? 
he absolutely competes his ass off and showed, I think, his teammates a lot. According to the guys we talked to this week, he maybe won his team over, even though they lost the game, in that performance because of what happened the week before against Buffalo. They were blown away by his composure. And if you watch that game, at the end of the game, you know, their rookie corner gives up a touchdown on a stutter and go with a minute 43 to go. You're thinking, oh, man, they're going to lose. And they come back without any timeouts. He, if you watch that drive, you're, you're sitting there watching the game like, hurry, hurry, hurry. He's out there just as composed and calm as he can be, leads them right down the field, ends up hitting Dotson uh, on, the, on a tying touchdown. We all thought, are they going to go for two? Are they going to kick the extra point? They ended up kicking the extra point. But the point was to watch him execute that two-minute offense against the Philadelphia defense, a team that was in the Super Bowl, the best team in their division in the NFC last year, and to look like he's been there his whole life. I, I think that's what gets you excited. Now, he's not perfect. I mean, they're still growing. They, 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 they still up front are, are kind of piecing it together. I feel like they're still gelling. we got a new system with Eric Bieniemy, So it's still a work in process. How's he? I'm hey, saying, how is Bieniemy when you talk to him? Because I've only heard for, him speak a couple times, and it's not – He's not a public speaker, I don't think. How was the conversations no, that, with him about football? Yeah, no, he's uh, he he's basically brought the 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 Kansas City system to to Washington. I mean, that, that's that's what he's trying to do. In fact, talking to Sam about it, he said he has studied so much of of Patrick Mahomes, not comparing himself to Mahomes, but just trying to understand. Oh, on this play, this is where he's looking. This is the read. He, he's a gym rat. You know, he's a film guy that loves to to prep. Uh, Peyton would be proud of him as, as much of a film junkie as he is. And I think the enemy and he have kind of become kind of joined at the hip here on what they're trying to do. I think the is a massive fan of the potential of what Sam Howell can do. And I think they feel like they're just kind of scratching the surface of, uh, of getting the ball out there. You think about it. You got Terry McLaurin, who's, we all know what he's capable of doing and, and, and how, how uh, he's become one of the better receivers in the league. Uh, Curtis Samuel, uh, Dotson, who's outstanding. I think this Brian Robinson, a young guy out of Alabama, showing physicality. He's showing a little bit more, I feel like, a little more twitch and juice when he gets the ball out on the perimeter. So they got some weapons, and I think what they've been looking for is just a guy that can process and get the ball out. And uh, keep this in mind now. They've been sacked more than anybody else in the league. You know, they follow that nine-sack game up with another five sacks last week. Now, the good news is the Bears have two sacks all year. They have, they're the dead last in the entire league and in and, and getting sacks. Well from here. So that should be a problem. <laughs> Maybe tonight. not. But, uh, Maybe but not. Uh, I, I do think, I do think uh, how and this offense uh, have a chance. And, and the enemy, you know. 